The holly tree a block from our house offers mockingbirds and robins end of winter sustenance. But this year the berries caught the attention of a dozen or so cedar waxwings, prompting the local robins and mockers to try to run the newcomers away from their berry stash. They were destined to fail. Now those disputes all happened before I came on the scene with the camera. I didn't show up until the next day, a raw and drizzly March morning. By that time, the original dozen waxwings had got the word out and their number had swelled to 60 or 70. The local birds were forced to concede to the invaders, but the robins complained about it all day. Only once, though, did I see any altercation, when a lone uppity waxwing landed a foot away from a robin and got his presumptuous butt booted out. But mostly the invaders came in too many numbers, picking a section of the tree and working it together. Good strategy. No crew of farm workers picking produce would wander around willy-nilly, because if they did, then once the bell peppers or tomatoes or whatever were picked over, the workers wouldn't be able to reach several of them from a single spot anymore. Not that I claim the waxwings laid the tree out in a grid and methodically worked the squares one after another, but they did start at the top and work down to the bottom branches by late morning. And in whatever area they settled, they were quick little buggers, hoovering up every berry within reach in five or ten seconds and spurting to a new spot nearby. Keeping track of all the actors in the frame at one time is like tracking all the pool balls on a break shot. My eyes aren't that caffeinated. Now you might notice that cedar waxwings don't chew. They just gulp a berry down, follow that one up with a half dozen more, and then flee. Some of the birds don't even light. They just flutter in front of the tree grabbing berries. It can be like watching hummingbirds feed. Then they all whoosh away on cue. Birding author Pete Dunn says they look like flying croissants with wings. They fly dozens of quick raids every hour, seldom lingering for more than a minute at a time. In between forays, they watch from the highest nearby tree for a bit, before dropping down for another sortie. They hang out in the tallest tree because it's a good lookout for hawks. I mean, with several dozen of these birds in one place, a hawk would consider it his duty to have a go at them. In warm weather, these birds will eat a few flying insects, but otherwise, fruit is their only food. So these highly social birds live a nomadic life in ever-shifting tribes, tribes which must always be wandering in search of a new source of berries. As the hours pass that day and the drizzle turned to sunshine, the holly berries disappeared. Having stripped the tree by one that afternoon, the waxwings were reduced to cleanup duty. Many berries had been knocked to the ground in the earlier assaults, and the flock was not about to move on until all the berries were gone. They worked at it with dispatch, again, pretty much hanging in a group and gobbling without pause. Of course, some of those berries would have fallen days earlier because they were past their prime. I've seen robins in that situation drop berries that they deemed overripe or rotten, and the waxwings appeared to do the same thing. Ground feeding afforded the best looks of the day at these distinctive and distinguished birds wearing party masks. The name waxwing refers to those red spots on their wings that look like beaded wax. But in fact, as Pete Dunn points out, the entire body seems poured from wax. From the swept back rakish crest to the yellow tipped tail, every feather looks seamlessly set in place. Those daubs of color on wings and tail come from the carotenoids in the berries they eat. The more mature the bird, 
the larger the dollops of color. As if the smidgens of red and yellow were status symbols for the elders in the tribe. Perhaps this is one of the younger waxwings. The holly tree and the ground beneath it are bare now. The robins and the local mockingbird can hang out there if they choose in peace again, but they won't find the food they used to expect. Their thoughts on the matter would be, Dadgum cedar waxwings.